Hi, everyone. Welcome to A Navigators. Today, we are happy to bring to our conversation Daria from UAI. How do you UAE. pronounce it? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> United Arab Emirates. And uh, she helps uh, brands to get to these amazing market opportunities in the region that I think is very underserved in the Amazon community. So I know very few people that work there. And I hope we can learn something uh, very helpful and insightful. So could you please introduce yourself and how you get to uh, this region and how you to get to the Amazon and the e-commerce space? Sure. Uh, first, thank you very much for having me. Um... Yeah, so uh, how we started uh, this, this region, uh, we are actually an analytic tool which gives data on different uh, niches, market opportunities, etc. And originally we started uh, with China market in 2020 uh, to work with uh, Chinese cross-border sellers. Uh, although we start to look in the different markets, we realized there is like few markets uh, which we didn't cover yet, uh, where we have like corporate clients such as PNG, L'Oreal, etc., and Elsa entrepreneurs. So one of the market was um, uh, uh, like uh, the uh, post-Soviet Union countries uh, like uh, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. And the second exciting market for us was actually MENA. Uh, because we also software provider, we need to like choose some kind of market where we don't have uh, much competition, and also where we can see that n number of types of sellers gonna grow. And we actually did the right. We started uh, our adventure in uh, this region like uh, one year ago. Uh, and yeah, they really see significant growth, and they they they. they, they can see like uh, real potential uh, for Amazon and for local player known as well. So uh, I guess uh, yeah, shortly this is it. And yeah, my my, my uh, like personal experience like I used to live in China uh, for eleven years. Uh, it was like a really long time of my life. Uh, I. Elsa used to work in e-commerce during all of this space, so I started to 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 sell in marketplaces like long, long, long time ago, in like I guess uh, 2011, uh, and uh, I I I owned a fulfillment center. Then I went work for like a big uh, Chinese company, and Sarah. So uh, I used to work for marketplace as well for many years. Uh, and at some point, I just decided to start to do what I really like. And uh, this, uh, this is actually working with sellers, working with data, and uh, help uh, companies to scale their business. Yeah, wow. Great journey. Yeah. Usually, yeah. I, I like to, to talk to people that they have all kind of different experience because I believe more <coughs> diverse experience you have, you can be more creative as an entrepreneur. Right, this is okay. So uh, I, I'm really curious, like, uh, what the main uh, kind of um, problems or issues the brands from US or from Europe that want to enter this uh, space uh, is uh, um, having like uh, just few things that yeah. Yeah. General. So. Um... Yeah, everybody thinks that it is an exciting market, that there is like uh, rich shakes get that that that, that get like buying everything you know like from everywhere. Uh, although uh, and uh, people else understand like like that, that, that it's like market of great potential because for example in Saudi Arabia there is population on 40 million people, uh, which is uh, very significant. And Elsa, uh, like um, then you come into Dubai or Saudi Arabia, you can feel the prices because, you know, like everything, uh, it's quite pricey. So you can understand, you know, like that the spend level is quite high, uh, even though there may be for United Arab Emirates market is not that big. 
Uh, and also the beauty of the market that uh, the market is pretty much consolidated. So for example, for us, as for service provider, we work with companies who have regional headquarters in uh, Dubai and they cover all GCC, including Turkey and actually Pakistan. Uh, so for us, it's like uh, quite a good uh, solution. And also in terms of logistics, uh, for example, Dubai is very ambitious. Uh, they build an ecosystem the way they actually uh, have a logistic hub and uh, financial hub for whole GCC region. So for example, like then uh, companies started to consider themselves um, uh, like working seriously in the region, uh, they need to like have a license. Uh, because for example, then you start in with Amazon, it's qu quite easy, right? Uh, you can start the license from one of the 16 countries. Basically most of the like uh, countries, uh, like uh, you, you, with, with most of the license, we can open the license and start to sell on Amazon, just like that. But then uh, the, 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 the issue comes then uh, you need to protect your brand and to protect your brand the brand should be registered in the UAE and so on and KSA and so on. so at that moment you know like people considering to open their company there and open a bank account there and they actually uh, Dubai is one of the best place to do this because uh, there are uh, very before it was like uh tax haven there are no tax now it's like uh nine percent uh, corporate tax on uh like on revenue although it's uh applicable only for those companies which uh the the the, 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 the revenue is uh, uh crossing over uh 100 uh usd so 100 000 usd sorry <laughs> yeah so basically um what i'm saying is um that um it's a really great place uh not only to consider uh the the, the being in the uae but also to consider to go in ksa to go into uh gulf countries uh gcc countries and such will that work there uh although what uh companies usually uh don't understand they trying to first of all like uh, the, uh of course uh, experienced sellers for them is quite easy they check the data they can check the data with like our tools or like with any other tool which available in the market uh and they, they they actually can understand what the size of their category what the size of the niche uh what potentially they gonna get out of market uh but the challenge is that not all of the market consolidated around the marketplaces, right? So there is two main marketplaces, Amazon and Noon, known as a local player. And uh, there is also D2C channel, which uh, like every brand uh, going to take care uh, in like maybe not from the beginning, but uh, eventually every brand uh, like you know, taking this channel seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's a similar story because uh, I live uh, partly in Europe, so all the European VAT is is uh, is it understandable for me. But when we help uh, some brands from US get to European soil, it, it it's getting a lot of frustration. So uh, I, I see the like parallel when you go to this your area. It's the same, like yeah, it's a different legal stuff, different. Uh, financial stuff so but i believe you 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 have all the providers that can help with all the organization and uh, uh you also mentioned some external kind of uh, dtc traffic and what about the language and influencers and, and like instagram or i know in china it's a very different platforms right you use but uh so I am mostly like curious about the language issues. I understand in, in Dubai everyone speaks English, but still you have to be Arabic, right? And uh, the influencers. So what do you yeah, think about? so 
Yeah, so basically there are different influencers. The, the beauty of Dubai that uh, there are like uh, no, uh, uh, even though there are a lot of people speak Arabic, uh, although there are like a lot of people doesn't speak Arabic. A lot of people speak actually Hindi in Urdu. Uh, mm. It's 40 percent. So basically, India, Pakistan, um, and like uh, the, the the rest is actually a mix of different different languages and uh, fight. Then they talk about SEO in uh, Amazon UAE. It's actually uh, only the um, English. Uh, yeah, so it's basically English, and it's usually it's uh, automatic translation into Arabic. Although mm -hmm. uh, it's also could be manually uh, fixed, uh, and th then they talk about the, um, for example, noon. There is more audience, like local audience, because you know, like they like to support the local player. Uh, more Arabic audience, but uh, it's still it's it's still honestly not the key factor which you uh, like do. And for influencer, influencers are actually, it's like they are from everywhere. And some of them, that's true, they speak only speak Arabic, they, they have blogs in Arabic, but most of the, especially like big influencers, like they uh, usually have their blogs in English. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, and, and of course and for KSA, for KSA it's uh, Arabic, uh, like basically 100%. Yeah, I interesting. And um, what do you think of the size of the market comparison, for example, to Europe? You mentioned like 40 million people. Uh, it's more or less size of the Germany market, right? And But yeah. I believe there is a different kind of products have more demand. Like there is a less uh, winter clothes, I believe, uh, popular in yeah. the industry. Or, what, what do you think the brands that really can get to this area and feel less competition? Because I, I think uh, the idea of new markets, it's uh, less competition. For example, US is crazy competitive, Europe a little bit less. We have some players in Japan. Sometimes it's like almost no competition from international brands. Yeah, so uh, like if they look at the uh, market totally, so basically there are around 1 million sellers in US, Amazon US. Uh, there is around uh, 700,000 uh, in Europe. Uh, there are millions of sellers in Southeast Asia and LATAM. It's around 4 million, according to Statista or something. Uh, the reason why it's not a gated market it's like basically there is a lot of Chinese sellers which are not restricted yet. They can open a few multiple accounts. So there's like lots of sellers. It's like very, uh, very, very dense market. Uh, and uh, if we talk about there, but of course, US and Europe is, is a big markets uh, and the very big uh the, the very big uh, number of customers and the very good um, uh, purchase power of those customers. Although, um, if we talk about the MENA, total MENA, Turkey, Pakistan, we like, let's say this region. So, um, we ca consider this region around like size of around 85 billion. So, if you compare this to Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia itself is around uh, 170 uh billion so it's basically half of southeast asia but the number of sellers in this market is actually around 100 thousand like one like hundred thousand basically and if they look like more deeply in the uae and ksa only so the number of sellers on noon and uh, amazon together is less than 20,000. Why so? Uh, because gated market. Uh, because to develop here, you need to open the license, open the bank account, and you know, like, not everyone uh, want to do this. 
second thing is actually you need to understand the uh how, how local people think how like different nationalities people think who is your audience uh so basically it's it's also very very uh key thing um and so what excited about the market and for ksa there is even less this big market as i said 40 million but the license uh basically to start uh to sell there is cost like real money it's like around thirty thousand per year um it's it's country which, which is like open just a few years four years ago so it's like everything is like very very new for saudi and yes you're right there is like very little number of sellers so what people usually do they start this uae they incorporate there then they open uh amazon account uh using the like, company uh, and start to sell uh there and you know like, try to understand how to how does it work if if they uh understand the market they uh, go and operate there uh separately so um basically because this is gated market uh with local the very um very interesting like uh, mixture of everything of different cultures uh there is like not much sellers who willing to work in such environment and also the market is quite underestimated by like local brand but by, by many brands so for example uh we work with a number of brands like big brands um and they say like I, I was asking like why in the home appliance category the leaders is actually not quite the same as anywhere so for example the guess what is the largest uh, home appliance brand in the uae it's actually black and decker uh and i never saw it in any market uh i used to work in <laughs> uh it's like very local phenomenal uh why so because they care about the market they uh are just uh like very aggressive on marketplaces so uh and and some kind of there are a lot of turkish brands there is like uh lots of small brands so basically like for smaller brand appliance the, the market looks like very very different like in terms of the market share of different brands if you compare it to europe us or, or any in any other part of the world i guess except africa or you know like uh, any uh, other country so um that means that small brands it's actually they have a uh, good chance to be uh very well established uh and you know they get in very sizable market uh if they focus on the on this market nice and uh yeah i totally think this is uh, under um under valued market yeah. there is a lot of low hanging fruits and um and w- what do, do you know about the regulation because uh, uh like for example in europe they they have very strict to bring something new to europe you need to have a lot of papers before in us it's easy you need to have a paper since up to you to have it before or a little bit later <laughs> and how does it work in uh, in your area so uh in uae it's uh quite easy uh so basically the government fee for certificate new certificate it's around 50 dirhams which is like basically 15 dollars like very little money uh although they can ask you know like for example if it's like something specific like cosmetics and it has like multiple ingredients they can ask you know like for uh certificate from of a region from your country or you know like or some specific test in the uae uh but i guess if 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 brand is okay if like it's uh like it's it's not it's not big money to be honest and usually uh this is all of the issues is uh is 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 is, is, is easy to solve for example we have a partner they uh actually uh doing fulfillment and certification uh and import of those uh products so they launch uh around 5000 sku every month uh 
So you can imagine if they can launch uh, 5,000 disk you every month, that means that actually it's like, uh, it's uh, quite easy and cheap and they mostly focus on FMCG. So it's cosmetics, it's uh, food, and so And another beauty of uh, your e-market that you actually, uh, you don't need to have the sticker even sometimes uh, on your products or you need just have the sticker, uh, but packages could remain the same. So you don't need to do any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, changes uh, before you start to sell. So you can actually start to sell, understand how it worked, how does it works. And if it works well for you, so you can just invest in better packaging, you know, like um, lo local packaging. Uh, another thing is the actually price elasticity. So it's like there are different items in same categories can cost very different money. So it's like, it's not, uh, it's, it's not mandatory. So you come to the market and you like set up the same price, for example, as you said, uh, in your home country. Uh, and I see it's for many, many, especially for like food brands, uh, European brands, uh, especially Western European brands. Uh, so they come and they set up the price as, 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 as normal as locally. But uh, of course, they uh, like cost is uh, quite, 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 quite low because we know how much it costs actually, for example, in Poland. Um, what else? And for KSA, it's actually quite different, but it also uh, could be reasonable. So for KSA, one uh, SKU certification cost around 5,000 uh, uh, Saudi real. So it's uh, around uh, 1,000, like oh, oh, 1,500 USD. Uh, 1500 USD, and so this is the price for certification of one SQ. But the, the good news that it's, uh, it's very regulated, it's very, very uh, like by law, it's like it's nothing, it's 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 nothing, you know, like. Uh, you can understand or you cannot uh, go there. Uh, answering your questions, uh, the, 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 the administrative barrier in uh, UAE especially, it's uh, nothing, you know, like compared to Europe, uh, it's more like US, uh, US kind of structure. Okay, yeah, thank you. I think it's helpful. Uh, so usually before we close, I ask about um, the modern stuff of AI, what's going on, your insight. I know you guys have a listing uh, creation optimization tool in, in your platform already to use AI, but um, do you have any um, insights or something that you use for your business or for your clients? Yeah, so basically for us is um, what we can see here, it's because the e-commerce in the region are developing very fast. So we have like number of um, clients who need to list a lot of products. And also this is the specific if of GCC market, to be honest, because if you're a seller like for, for of generic products, let's say uh, there is like, very uh, little number of products we generate in like very high revenue. For example, in Amazon US, you can launch a few bestsellers uh, and it's going to bring you millions, right? If, 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 if it's like uh, becoming big. In GCC, because of the market is not that big, so especially in the UAE, so the, 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 there are limits on your growth for each SQ. So what sellers do? they uh, actually launch more SKUs. Uh, so they have like wider, but wider portfolio to, in order to, 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 to have uh, good uh, revenue. Um, and what we do usually we, because we are sc uh, sc sc scrubbing, right? Like basically all, all, all the data. So they have all the pictures of the, like everything, all the uh, descriptions and play 
using that kind of big data, we can play and they can give it to the uh, AI and just uh, generate really amazing uh, descriptions uh, and do it in bulk. Like basically, like if if there are like large number of SKUs need to be uploaded, uh, it's uh, for us it's easy to generate uh, everything. Every, every, everything in terms of text uh, uh, content and uh, in terms of pictures, we are now working the integrating one of the AI. So it's also going to be uh, available for our clients to just to, 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 to change the pictures, to change the background. This is stuff that already in the market. I'm sure it's like kind of uh, boring, but it's actually what what clients need, um, and, and then they are trying to build something scalable. Uh, and the other thing, what we now are doing now, it's actually mapping data between different marketplaces. Uh, mm -hmm. This is more like uh, big clients uh, ask, but uh, I'm sure for small clients, it's also that it's going to be much more easy, much more, much more uh, pleasant to use this thing. So basically, when you see your SKU and your competitors on different marketplaces in the one dashboard. It's kind of also a very boring technical task, but uh, for those who operate marketplaces and have a lot of products in their portfolio, it's like something kind of helpful. Yeah, but I think this is a big part uh, of, uh, of uh, all the game on marketplaces and in general in commerce you cannot be in the void, right? You always need to compare yourself to others and it's very dynamic. Correct, correct, yeah. correct, of course. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Daria. It was a pleasure talking to you. I personally learned a lot. Uh, thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Bye to everyone. See you next time. Thank you. See you. Bye.